Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and this is the uh, part three of epithelial tissue. Our continuing discussion of the different types of epithelial tissue which are found in the human body. And let's begin. And so let's go over here and I'll click this to enlarge it. And so this particular tissue, again, is pretty interesting. Like if you look at this, you're like, wow, there's a lot going on here. First off, what I, what I look at when I'm looking at this tissue, I see I, there's free space. And so that's a characteristic of the very first cell layer that you're dealing with is epithelial. And so things below that are, are not epithelial. So this is epithelial. Do you notice here that there's, like, it looks like there's a little hair coming off. Let me sort of help you out with that. So here's a cell. This is called uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar. And so if you have a cell like this, the top of the cell has little protein extensions coming off called cilia, and that's what this is, uh, coming up above here. And so the intention of the cilia are to sway and move things along. And so it's called pseudo because when you first glance at this, it looks like there's many cells, but in fact there's only one cell, but it, the nuclei are kind of all over the place. And so pseudo stratified means simple, and they're really columnar in mostly although not every cell is a, is, a, is a column looking. So the cells appear layered. That's what the pseudo is from. Not truly layered, so pseudo. And so here's a really nice picture of a light microscope photograph of this. Here's the cilia. And again, this is found in your trachea. The trachea is your windpipe. And so sometimes when you're breathing in, I don't know if you've ever seen like when light is is coming in through a window, you can sort of see all the dust particles that are that are actually present in air. Depending on where you live, there's more pollutant and there are dust particles or particulate in the air than other places. And certainly you wouldn't be want to standing around someone who's smoking because all of that smoke and dust and debris uh, is going to get into your lungs or maybe not. So if you breathe it in and it goes into your trachea, what happens here, really dramatic, your goblet cell will be secreting lots of mucus and it'll sort of trap all of that dust particle which you don't want going into your lungs in your alveoli. It'll trap it. You're like, well, what good is that? Well, then the cilia, not drawn to scale, will be able to then sway and push all of this mucus out of your trachea and then ultimately you will swallow it. So if there's any bacteria or what have you, uh, pathogens in this, it'll take care of it because once it goes into the stomach, which is one of its main functions, is to destroy microorganisms. So it's a protection. So this is a protective tissue. So here's the goblet cells making mucus. Here's the cilia. This, this protects us, and it's found in the trachea. It's pretty cool. And then this is a great uh, electron micrograph, elect to very high magnification. You can actually see the cilia coming up, which is swaying and moving. You know, there's some organisms that, that move around completely with cilia, like some protozoa like paramecium. But this is a tissue in our body. So the cell's not going anywhere, but the cilia is beating and, and moving the film of mucus along the surface uh, in order to cleanse. And so this is a it's kind of a back away photograph. I like it. It's under the light microscope. Here's the epithelial tissue. This is something other. This is something like connective tissue below. And you can see it's pseudostratified, and you can see the cilia here, you can see the free space here. Pretty interesting. So pseudostratified ciliated columnar, it's found in the respiratory tubes. There's also some columnar uh, cells that have, epi that have cilia that are found, for example, in the female fallopian tubes. Sometimes the intention there is to move the egg when it's released in ovulation from the ovary, move it down to a place where it's capable of fertilizing or to be fertilized. And so this is a, a great shot of pseudostratified ciliated columnar. It's a mouthful. And there it is, goblet cells. Here's the basement membrane. These blue circles are the nuclei. Here's the, here's the cilia. And again, cilia are just simply protein tubes that we saw earlier back like, like that that sway back and forth uh, to help move the mucus along. And again, I mentioned how they move the egg as well. And so this particular tissue is called stratified epithelium because there's many, 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 many cell layers. And so you'd find this on the outside of your skin. 
And so this isn't great for diffusion. This is great for protection. And see the, how the cells are very squamous or flat-like or tile-like, and so like pancake-like. And so this is a very, very good for protection right here. And it's found in the epidermis of the skin, this type of epithelial. You can see here under the light microscope that these layers right here are stratified. This is the free space out here. And you know, I mentioned this before, perhaps in a previous video, that if you get a sliver here, it doesn't really hurt. And there's no damage done. There's no nerve. There's no blood loss because the blood is down here and the nerves are down here. And you're like, well, these cells are dead anyway. So they're, it's kind of like, I, uh, I don't want to shower you with too much metaphor, but it's almost like one of those um, packages of Pringles chips where there's layers of chips all on top of each other. And the ones on the very bottom are alive. So these ones down here in your Pringles on the bottom of the can are alive and they divide through mitosis. But as they get moved up to the top of the container, they get sloughed off. And so they also die because they're away from the blood supply so they don't get oxygen. And also they fill up with a protein called keratin in a process called keratinization, which means that they fill up so much that they die, but it makes an impenetrable layer and it's good for protection. This protein's rather tough stuff, and it also comprises your nails and hair as well. It's a great photograph of stratified squamous right here in your epithelial. It plays a protective role. It's really cool how you can look at tissue under the microscope, see it, and go, oh, stratified squamous. I think this is protection. These cells on the very bottom are the ones that are alive and dividing. Here's the basement membrane. Here's the connective tissue below. So... You would find this in areas all throughout the body where you want protection. So the outer layer of the skin, the inside of the mouth. You know, we're always eating something or sucking on a pen or something, and there's germs trying to get in. And so you would want the inner lining of the mouth to have stratified uh, cells so that no pathogens can get in. Also, anywhere there's like an orifice or a hole or trying to get in. Bacteria trying to get into the ear, trying to come up through the anal cavity or vagina if you're female. And they're all just trying to get in, and so they, they can't through this layer as much unless there's some sort of breach or penetration into that. And so continuing the discussion, if you start putting these things together, you have something called stratified, more than one layer, cuboidal epithelial, and here's a picture of it. And so you can find this, again, in glands such as the mammary gland or sweat glands or salivary glands or pancreas. Uh, this is what it looks like. There's several cell layers, and they are capable of protecting. They can also do a little secretion and absorption. Here's an example of stratified columnar, so more than one layer of columnar cells. And you can find this in uh, the urethra. And so this is where urine is passing out. You can also find it in your pharynx and your throat. And so it's, it's somewhat protective right here. Here's the free space. So this is what we're talking about in terms of stratified columnar would be right there. So that all of this tissue right here is stratified columnar. This is something like connective. And so another picture of that, whoops, another picture of stratified columnar right there. This particular tissue is a, is a very um, unusual one. It's called transitional. So you know that word means sort of to transition from one thing to another. And so this particular epithelial is sort of designed to distend or return to normal size. And it's found almost primarily in the urinary bladder. And if you can appreciate this, when your bladder, which contains urine, it's storage of urine, when it's really full, you can imagine it like a water balloon that's really about to burst and the, and the latex is extremely thin. But when you release that, the balloon gets a lot smaller and the latex becomes thick. So the thickness of the, of the balloon is transitional. And so as you can see here, this looks to be like here's urine inside the, this space. This looks like to be an empty bladder because there's a lot of cells. And so whoops, it transitions from what looks to be like many. These are unstretched transitional ones and these are stretched ones, meaning that they're sort of thin because of the fact the bladder is full. And so this is a picture of epithelial tissue and it happens to be transitional epithelial, which is found in the urinary bladder. Now, 
Um, a few other t specialized types of epithelial cells, we have these things called glandular epithelial, which are found in glands. And I'll just emphasize like the pancreas for, for an example. When these cells secrete, it could either be secreted into a duct, which leads to, in this case, this is the, the beginning of the small intestine, or an open space. If you secrete to the outside, and this is considered to be outside, I know like, for example, sebaceous gland to the outside of the skin or a sweat gland or a mammary gland to the outside. It's considered to be what we call in physiology uh, exocrine or exit to the outside. If you're secreting to the bloodstream, it's considered to be endocrine. And so there's more to be coming about that, but those are two, two important terms. And so this glandular epithelial is really good at, at uh, secreting and absorb, uh, absorbing. And so an example of this would be the thyroid gland. We have this sort of butterfly-shaped gland on, in, on our neck on top of the trachea, right below the vocal cords in the larynx. And so this produces, um, oops, let's see, sorry about that. This produces uh, hormones, and it gets secreted into these cavities and then into the bloodstream. And so finally, we have three kinds of ways in which we can secrete. Cells can secrete, like fragments of cells can pinch off, and the whole cell can actually branch off and disintegrate. And sebaceous glands, mammary gland, and pancreas are an example of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed part three of epithelial tissue, and thanks for watching.